Hi everyone, thank you for joining me in the last session of today's conference. Hope you enjoyed it as I did. Hope you are not tired. Uh, I will try to give fast pace, but I will explain everything. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to raise your hand and ask me. Uh, so who am I? I'm, my name is Victor Krop. I work at JetBrains. You probably know us. Uh, I've seen IntelliJ idea at least. Uh, I love Kotlin programming language. It's, uh, we, we do a lot of new projects in Kotlin. And I'm excited about the possibilities the language gives us to write clean, concise, and expressive code. And in the next 45 minutes, I will show you how to use Kotlin to create uh, readable and easy to use APIs. So, uh, what is a DSL? Uh, DSL is a domain-specific language. There are two types of DSLs, uh, external and internal DSLs. External DSL, for example, uh, a SQL, SQL language to uh, query and manipulate relational databases. It is focused on a single task. It does it right, does it good, but you probably cannot write a graphical user interface in SQL. At least I don't know how uh, to do this. Uh, well, uh, Kotlin, on the contrary, is a general purpose programming language. You can write any uh, kind of application in Kotlin, uh, from mobile applications to desktop uh, to web services. And... Um, Uh, sorry. And uh, in your applications, there are always uh, some internal APIs. You create some objects, uh, you manipulate them with, the, with their methods, uh, and so on. And these internal APIs, in fact, form uh, some sort of internal DSL. So internal DSL is a, a, some language uh, embedded in your program using the uh, uh, features of the uh, language, of the programming language you use to write your code. So, uh, what features Kotlin ha has to help us write uh, nice code? Uh, somewhat looking like, like this, uh, so this is an example of what we can achieve with Kotlin. It's a valid, uh, correct uh, example uh, code snippet in Kotlin, and I will show you how to achieve something like this. Uh, so as an example, uh, we will develop a microservice, because microservices are cool. Maybe not that cool as serverless stuff we've seen just before, but they are cool. And this microservice will uh, display as a calendar, a holiday calendar. So because the holiday season is coming, uh, the Christmas is on December 25th, uh, and before Christmas we have four Advent Sundays, and I always forget when the first Advent Sunday is. So is it tomorrow or uh, in a week? Uh, so I, I create a calendar, import it in my I don't know what, what, what I, I'm using uh, Google Calendar, you can input in Outlook, for example, and so on. Uh, and here is, a, here is an example. We, I'm using a third-party library called BeWeekly. So I create calendar, I add an, create an event, set some properties of the event, add the event to a calendar, and finally I will print it so we can quickly show it, uh, can quickly show it to you. So it runs, so here is an event, Christmas. So, uh, well, um, th this code maybe, uh, there, there is nothing special in this code. You've seen a similar code uh, thousands uh, times before, and uh, there is nothing bad in this code, but, I, uh, but no, well, actually, there, there is a lot of problems with this code. So, for example, when I take this line, add event, and I don't know, put it, put it to the end, will it work? Well, it will compile, it will run, but, well, the result will be probably not that we expect. 
an empty calendar. Great, if I put add event, like after I created event, will it work? Well, it depends on the internal implementation of the library. It may work and it may not work, you don't know. Uh, okay, let's go back. So if you want to create another event, you copy paste, well, <laughs> you shouldn't do this, never, never, but, but sometimes you do. So if you, you want to fix, uh, you, you, you get compiler errors right, right here, you, you fix them quickly, then you change, for example, instead of Christmas, New Year, will it work? Well, it will compile, it will run, it will work, but the result will be uh, not that you expect. You, you have two New Years on the wrong date, something, something crazy. So, you shouldn't do this. Uh, but we can create an API that will prevent such kind of errors almost uh, entirely. And uh, let's see how Kotlin can help us. We'll start with the simple thing, just to um, get started to explain some uh, features of the language. Uh, well, uh, I, I hope the, the code is self-explanatory. You, you understand that with a fun, with keyword fun, we declare a function. With a val, we declare a, a immutable variable. So that's it. Let's, uh, so I don't like this uh, last line uh, where we serialize calendar to a, th to a string and print it. So, uh, wouldn't it be nice if we could just write like this? So we, we ask calendar to print itself uh, to the output. You see the print uh, method is, is, is in red because there is no such method. Well, uh, in Kotlin, uh, let, let's, let's ask IDE to do this for us. Uh, in Kotlin, we can declare an extension function to any type uh, you have, be it uh, library type, uh, third party, or yours. An extension function uh, is a function that behaves like if it was a member function of the uh, given uh, class. And we denote it by uh, adding a type name dot before, uh, before a function name. So, and now here we can call it, so this is uh, the, the exactly that function. We put this uh, code here, and inside this uh, extension function, this is, a, is, a, is a, the, the, there is a this object, uh, like, as I said, as I've said, uh, if it were a member fu function. The commander. So let's, let's run it while well, it prints, as expected. Uh, we can make it uh, shorter because it's a one-liner function. We can just put it in one line with equal sign, and that's it. So this is uh, an extension function. Uh, well, we, we, we can go further to reduce some uh, boilerplate code and here we have a setter method for an event and uh, IDE uh, suggests us to use property access syntax. So in Kotlin, uh, a pair of setter and getter methods are converted into property, so it looks like if it were a, if, if it were a field of this class, but in, uh, in fact, it compiles into getter and setter methods. Uh, well, it looks a bit nicer, uh, but still uh, we have a summary object constructor, so it's, it wraps uh, a name of the event. And similar to extension function, we can declare extension property. Let's uh, name it title. Uh, so uh, we have an extension property title on the event type and it will set summary for us. It has a type of string and it will set summary uh, for us. 
and uh, the, there is uh, fake uh, implementation of uh, getter because in Kotlin you cannot have a setter only property, you need to have uh, a getter always and we, we don't need it. So, and now we can refactor it to this. So we remove another uh, uh, unnecessary uh, stuff. Uh, well, uh, we, we have similar code here. We uh, create a date and then um, assign a start uh, date and end date of the event. Uh, well, let's, let's uh, reduce this code in a similar way. Create an extension property date that will set both uh, dates at one time so we can move this. We now have event here and well, I'm using local date to, to reduce uh, a little bit. Well, there, there is less code to uh, screw things up uh, but still, it's uh, I, 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 I made it look nicer, but I haven't solved any of the problems I've shown you in the beginning. Well, let's finally do this. So, what I wanted to do now is um, to uh, declare to declare uh, a function to help me create a calendar. So, I'll, I will name it calendar. Uh, it, and I wanted to create an instance of calendar and initialize it. And to, to do this, uh, I will provide an initializer in the, as a parameter to this function. So it's a, it's a lambda function. So let's define it. Uh, fun calendar. Uh, it will accept some lambda. Oh, I need to name it, so I name it builder usually. And what it will do, it will create iCalendar. So, so this is uh, the syntax uh, of uh, uh, lambda, lambda type, so it, it, ha it has no arguments and returns unit, it's a synonym to void. Think of it as it. So, um, and what I want to do is to put all the initialization here inside this uh, lambda. Well, uh, I need uh, somehow uh, to access the uh, calendar object here and I can uh, make this not a simple lambda but a lambda with the receiver. Uh, so it's it's a similar to extension function, uh, but but for lambdas. So this lambda will behave itself like if it uh, was uh, an, uh, a member function of uh, iCalendar type. So, which means that this uh, in 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 this uh, lambda will be of type iCalendar, and. Will, which means that you can emit this. So you, you, you can always emit this. And I, the only thing I forgot is that I need to apply this uh, lambda to uh, the calendar. So I, the, there is a shortcut for this. It's, it, it, we call apply function with the, with the lambda as a parameter. So let's quickly check. Well, it, it it prints the same calendar as before, so we didn't break anything. It works. Uh, well, uh, the, 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 there is another cool uh, thing in Kotlin, is that if you have a lambda as the last parameter of your method, you can uh, you can take it out of parentheses and call the method like this. So this, this is a lambda function and it is uh, passed as a last parameter to calendar function. And because there are no other par par parameters uh, and the parentheses are empty, we can remove them. 
So it looks uh, much cleaner now. Well, we can even inline this iCalendar var variable. So we create a calendar here, initialize everything inside, and then print it. Works like magic. Well, not magic, we just did it. Uh, well, we can apply the same trick to event, right? We create uh, an extension function event for, for iCalendar. Uh, with the similar builder, uh, we create event inside, apply an initializer to it, and then add an event uh, to a calendar. So we reduce a lot of code here. So here, event we create. We don't need an, to call an event an event manually, and here we don't need to mention the variable by name. So well, this code solves a lot of problems we've seen in the beginning. Uh, when you want to add another event, you even if you copy paste the code uh, and then modify some parts of it, it will work exactly as you may expect it to work. Then uh, you you cannot uh, add event later than you print the calendar because you initialize everything inside the calendar initializer. So it already looks much better and prevents a lot of possible errors. But uh, I still not quite satisfied with the with the code because, for example, with the, this this uh, date constructor, you see, I, I I've been talking about uh, Christmas and Christmas in in December and December is the twelfth month of the year and I see eleven here. You know why? Because we they start numbering with zero makes no sense with the month because nobody numbers months, months from zero. Well, there is another uh, option to create a date like this, but uh, type month December every time, uh, well, you, you can do this, but it's, it's not good. And there is another problem. Do you remember which which parameter should be should go first year or or day number? If if I mix them, what what happens? It will be an error because there is no it is not possible to have a day number 2017 in a month. Well, uh, enough renting. What I what I want to do is to write it like this. I've already shown a lot of extension functions, and I just write another one. As I said, you can write extension function uh, on a, on an any type, and in this case, I will take um, library type int, uh, and well, looks a bit better. Well, it looks a lot better, but with this, with some magic and infix keyword, we can do this. So infix keyword means uh, that if a function has a single parameter, we can omit dot and parentheses, and it, it's it's uh, the, the the code to to this to the same function but written in a much cleaner way. So now you, you, you probably never mix and match uh, year and uh, a day number, and of course you can create 12 uh, such extensions for every month and you will be safe. Cool. Well, I started uh, with the task that I want to know if, the, if tomorrow is the, uh, the first Advent Sunday or not. Let's find it out. So uh, for this, oh no, uh, that I extract uh, a cre Christmas date to a variable, and this is the power of DSL, because a DSL is not a, a specific uh, language created only for creating calendars. You can use all the language features inside your DSL. So, for example, I can use variables here. 
Uh, and I want to f uh, find when the Advent Sunday is, and the fourth uh, Advent Sunday is a Sunday before Christmas, right? So we uh, will write it like this. Well, <laughs> Kotlin is cool, but it has <laughs> no superpowers. <laughs> uh, let's help him. Let's help compiler to find the Sunday before Christmas. Let's declare. Well, I have. I can have top-level functions. I can have uh, top-level uh, variables and constants in Kotlin. So I declare a Sunday object. Uh, variable, oh well, actually. And now, you maybe guessed it, before will become an infix function. Uh, sorry. So, uh, I declare an infix function before, on day of week, which is Sunday, it accepts a date as a parameter, and then with some Java 8 time API, it will, uh, find a Sunday before a given date. So this is how we found a fourth advent Sunday, and we need to find the first one, and the first one is uh, three weeks earlier. So let's, let's do some arithmetic with dates. It doesn't compile well. We need to help compiler a bit. So we declare weeks. Uh, well, looks not good. Well, we, we may, we may. Well, we, we, we can make it like this and declare an extension property on integer with name weeks, uh, but I thought it would be boring to repeat uh, everything again and again, so I, I want to show you that in Kotlin we can overload operators, even on the library types. Uh, so we can, it is done in this way. So, oh, sorry. Uh, we declare an extension function times on int. Um, it accepts a period as a parameter. Uh, it does some multiplication inside. And with the keyword operator, uh, we tell Kotlin that we want to use asterisk for this uh, function, and uh, IDE can show us that this is this is the function. Uh, what what uh, actually uh, uh, compiler will compile it to to this function call. Uh, but you see the minus is not highlighted as an error. We can go to the uh, library code. And find out that actually there is a function minus declared in the Java library uh, in a local date class that accepts uh, some temporal amount, period of time. So Kotlin detects uh, that uh, the class has uh, uh, such uh, a method with a special name and allows us to use minus in Kotlin code. So this, this way we find out uh, the date of the first advent. Let's generate uh, events uh, for our calendar. As I said, we can use any language constructs here, so we will um, uh, make a loop to generate events in a loop. And to make a loop, we, we need uh, first a sequence of uh, a days to loop over and this, I will create a range. So this uh, uh, double dot uh, operator um, creates a range. It's a special type in Kotlin, uh, defined in a st standard library. And then uh, I want uh, to iterate this range every, every week. Okay, so let's let's rename this weeks to week. It's okay. So every will be an infix function, as you may guess. I, I did this trick before. 
And this is some magic. Uh, I don't want to explain in very much detail, uh, but well, you see that this is a loop from start to end, and it uh, every time it uh, shifts for uh, on a on a period, which in our case it's a week. So this this will generate a sequence uh, every every Sunday from the first Sunday. We, uh, advent Sunday to the last Advent Sunday, and we finally can iterate over a loop. So for Advent in uh, in this sequence, we'll create an event, and you see how uh, IDE suggests us to to insert the the call. So we. It knows that it has a lambda, uh, the func function event has a lambda as the last parameter and it, it doesn't uh, insert the parentheses for us. So we uh, put a title to this event and set a date and let, let's run it. And now we have uh, here, so we have four events with the name Advent and with the, with the dates every every Sunday. Uh, well, uh, I, I just wanted to, to have the numbers here, so I will convert for loop to for each index call to add an index uh, and here is a string template, like in PHP, but much better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, because it, it, it is still uh, statically checked at compiled time, so it won't allow you to print any type of uh, variable here, but and the, 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 the great thing, you can even uh, do some expressions here inside this string template, because well, again, it will be numbered from zero, and we don't have uh, advent number zero. We start with the one. So now, well, we have fourth, uh, third, uh, second, and first advent, and it's on, uh, actually, it's time in UTC, uh, because it's by the standard, uh, so it's a third, um, third December, so it's not tomorrow, but in, in, in an eight days. I found what I was looking for. Cool, cool. Still, there, there is some boilerplate I want to reduce. Uh, for example, this for each indexed call. It uh, look alien in our nicely looking uh, DSL, so we have uh, everything so, so clear. So what I can do here is, uh, Sorry, I will show it to you. So I can declare a special function with the, with the name invoke. It's an extension function again on a sequence type. Uh, sequence is generated here by every function. Uh, well, um, it again accepts a lambda and it calls for each index uh, inside and with an operator keyword. It means, uh, and the special name invoke, uh, means that we can call any object of a given type or expression as if it was a function. So we have a sequence here. Uh, let me select it. Here in parentheses, it is a sequence. And we can call it uh, like a method. So what, 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 what happens here, it's, it's valid code. We have a sequence in parentheses, and we, we have invoke function that accepts lambda, and because it's the last parameter, we omit uh, a parentheses. So we are calling uh, this invoke function on the sequence with uh, this lambda as a parameter. How cool is that? And it works. Well, now I'm I'm satisfied. So we we have oh well. What 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 what's for a name? It's Advent One, Advent Four. Let 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 let's write it. 
like like it should be. First advent. Well, we cannot have uh, spaces in variable names, but with backticks, we can use any name we want. Like this. So you cannot start a variable name with the number or with the digit. Uh, you can have spaces, but uh, with the backtick, Scotland Kotlin allows you to use any name for your uh, variables. So and we can uh, and we can uh, rename uh, the, another variable in the same way. Yeah. Now it's perfect, I'd say. So the, the, there is nothing except maybe uh, val keywords. Everything else is specific to our business domain. So we, create, we are creating a calendar on a given date with, uh, um, with the given events on the given dates uh, with the titles we want. Uh, so we have some uh, even magic with the dates manipulation here. So we went from, uh, to recap, we went from uh, unstructured imperative code to nicely structured declarative code. So we, we, we don't call uh, a function set date or add event. We just uh, assign uh, a title to an event. And that's it. Uh, well, we have some time, so I will uh, show you uh, some some possible um, problems with uh, with this DSL. So I've shown a lot of uh, bad things about the existing code, but there is some some bad thing about this code too. So I can declare event in, inside an event, and and like this. And you, you don't want to know how, how it will work, how it will come out. Well, because if, if we declare some event uh, here, well, uh, this, uh, this function call will end and add event earlier than, than this outer call. So the, the order of event, it will work for some reason. Well, you, you know why, but uh, if, as, if, if I look at, at at it as if it is my domain specific language i don't work uh, i don't want uh, such things to be allowed and actually we can disallow this we are doing uh, it like this so we uh, create an annotation we name it calendar dsl so we create dsl for cal calendar manipulation we uh, mark our annotation with another annotation we, we need to go deeper but only <laughs> that, that deep. So the uh, the annotation is DSL marker. And what we do with the, this calendar DSL, we annotate uh, type usages uh, of uh, the types that form our uh, DSL with this with this annotation. So um, we we can if uh, we were. Uh, editing our own code, if uh, iCalendar and vEvent uh, types were our own types, we can uh, annotate them uh, at the declaration point, but here we, we have only possibility to annotate uh, their usages here uh, in the extension, uh, in lambdas with receivers. So we, we use this possibility to do this, so we we have annotated them and we go back here and now it is not allowed. So what, what has happened here? I'll explain you right now. So uh, this uh, DSL marker means that you cannot uh, call a function on an object of a type annotated with uh, this annotation if there is uh, another implicitly available uh, object of uh, annotated with the same annotation in an inner scope. In, in more simple words, uh, so event is an extension function on a calendar. 
but it is here it is called on uh, in inside a lambda where this where this we can we can uh, verify where this is a v event and event type is annotated with the same DSL mark uh, calendar DSL annotation. So here we can only call uh, functions uh, without specifying this only on v event object. On only on this this. Uh, we, the, there is still a way to call uh, an event function on the calendar. If you really want to do this, you can. But the syntax is, is ugly. And this is done for a purpose. You should not do this. So, yeah, this is how uh, Kotlin prevents us from uh, stupid errors and allows us to create nice. Nicely looking code. Uh, so I have another 10 minutes and I promised you that we will develop a microservice. But uh, up until this point, I only print something to the terminal. Well, uh, let's, uh, I don't see. So, with the help of git, um, I now have, so this is exactly the same code we, we've seen just before. Uh, but I've added uh, a round, uh, uh, a call to um, Uh, server. So I, the, there is a framework called Kator. It's developed at JetBrains uh, for uh, to easily create uh, web services in Kotlin. So uh, and this is uh, a framework based on an, uh, uh, on DSLs as well. So we. Uh, in this framework, we create an embedded server on a port 8080. We apply routing patterns on this uh, server, and the only pattern we get is uh, a get on a slash URL, so on the root URL, and it will um, uh, return a calendar. So a calendar, oh, sorry. Uh, calendar function uh, is defined a bit differently here. So what it does, it, it serializes a calendar, but then it responds, uh, it, it creates an HTTP response uh, for, for our web server, and it returns a text plane, which is uh, incorrect in our example, but it will allow us to see that everything works. I did. So let's start it. So we since we see some debug logging from Netim, and we can switch to the browser. And yep. So here is our calendar, exactly as we've seen in the uh, console output. Now we have a web service uh, for for calendars. And everything is done uh, in a DSL way, I would say. So we uh, we combine two DSLs, our own DSL. We just created to creating and manipulating uh, calendars and a third-party DSL for web services. And well, uh, by the way, the 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 project is created with the Gradle. And up until version four, you 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 could only write grad, build Gradle scripts in Groovy, which is uh, another GV, JVM language, and it it is very well known for its dynamic uh, capabilities. But uh, when it comes to real coding, uh, the dynamic nature of the language doesn't always help you because 
you have a lot of uh, different uh, problems with the uh, runtime uh, resolve of uh, all the things. With Gradle 4, you can uh, write, build Gradle in Kotlin. Uh, it brings some advantages to uh, editing build scripts, like uh, static uh, uh, type checking, IDE uh, support, so I don't know, we, we can go here and invoke completion and we see that we can add some Maven repository in repositories close and if we write something, something wrong, IDE will detect it. So uh, here is another uh, example of what you can achieve uh, with the uh, Kotlin and with its uh, features to provide you an easy way to create DSLs. Um, so that's everything I wanted to tell you today. Thank you very much. And of course, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Hello. Um, the question is, uh, if you have more DSLs uh, on different projects, uh, you import on the same, uh, your project, uh, does they, they work together or is independent on the namespace uh, based? Uh, well, uh, I've just shown you an example how you can uh, take two DSLs, so one from the Cater framework to create an amended server and another one, our DSL, to create calendars and they work uh, perfectly together. And because uh, everything is compiled just into ordinary uh, classes and uh, methods and just uh, it's just a fancy syntax for a number of method calls, uh, so then it, it, it will work uh, like, like it should. So if you have uh, two DSLs with the same names in different uh, packages, so well, you probably, uh, if, you, if you want to use them together in the same file, you need to write long names for them. Uh, that's it. So the, the, the same rule applies uh, uh, if, if it was uh, just an ordinary call, uh, code with the ordinary method calls. N not, nothing special here. Uh, sorry, okay. it's related to the same question. Um, if I am importing two DSLs, uh, uh, which I'm not writing, uh, two external DSLs that have conflicts, uh, do I have uh, any way to specify which one I would like to use? Uh, so the, the, there is a... One pro probably way to, to resolve this, you can uh, define a type alias uh, by, by, I don't know, uh, let's, let's name, so like, like this. So this, this uh, you, you can then use n and n instead of int. I don't know where, where we have. So here we have an int and I can use n and n. So uh, yeah. Uh, you cannot uh, define an alias for a method uh, in the same way. So yeah, with the, with methods, uh, if you have clashing names, but this is um, the same thing as if it was a uh, code in any other language. If you have clashing names, you have some problems. You have to write longer names some somewhere to qualify them with the I don't know in, in Java world with the packages. Yep. Other questions? And so, so by the way, by the way, the source code of this uh, example is available on GitHub. I already pushed it there. So I am crop on uh, GitHub, and this is no slides con. You will find it there if you want to study it.
later. Yeah. Uh, in your experience, how much does this scale? Uh, if you have a very big scenario with a very big DSL, does is it? So, is uh, it yep. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of uh, DSLs uh, in JetBrains. So, for example, uh, we are I'm I'm one of the developers of the new service. We develop entirely in Kotlin. Uh, we uh, it's a web service with backend in Kotlin and frontend in Kotlin compiled to JavaScript and we use React as, as a framework for UI and we uh, wrote uh, uh, Kotlin wrappers for all React uh, stuff uh, so uh, you can generate uh, such a DSLs in an easy way uh, and um, so uh, the the React wrappers is pretty big, big uh, library with a lot of uh, things declared there, and we build our own UI framework on top of this. So we have uh, I don't know hundreds thousands of different uh, codes in the same way. So uh, you you can uh, use this easily. So th there is no problem in understanding this because everything is uh, pretty clear. If you are concerned about the performance of this, uh, then uh, I haven't mentioned, but, well, in this case, it's not really, uh, I don't know. So, here, you can apply inline modifier on a function, and uh, it will mean that it will, well, inline uh, the function body on the call side, so here we, we pass a lambda as a parameter, but when the function will be inlined, the, there will be no object creation uh, and the code inside will be just uh, inserted where, where it belongs to. So um, it will uh, have no overhead at all. So absolutely, at runtime, there is, uh, if you apply inline modifiers where, uh, where applicable, there will be no overhead, it will compile to the similar code uh, we've seen at the very beginning. What happens if you import two different packages and each package has a different uh, integer multiplication overloading, for example? Uh, you, 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 it, it won't compile. Simply, it won't compile. So, if if you uh, just use you, you, you will need to uh, resolve this conflict by, uh, by yourself. So, if if you cannot avoid uh, such an import, but you usually can. But if you you cannot, you can convert. Uh, so you can convert this asterisk to a function call times so in very special case when nothing else helps you can do this and then uh, it will resolve from the way um, but if uh, the uh, two methods available in the same scope uh, have an exactly the same signature I think it won't compile anyway and it doesn't matter uh, if we are using Kotlin, Java, or C++. Last one. Okay, uh, it seems that uh, the, the conflict stuff is mm, <laughs> very, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very yeah, interesting. It's, it's always and uh, according to that, do you do you um, do you think and uh, do you um, uh, prefer to move this kind of logic to create the domain-specific language uh, within the composition phase of the code, or you suggest to move to keep it also in library or on separate libraries? I would say it depends. <laughs> it depends on what what are you doing. So for for such, uh, um, so I would I would say uh, declaring extensions or on int is a bad idea generally. <laughs> so you you can do this uh, if you declare, for example, uh, this function is a private. It will it will mean that it is private for this file. 
So because you can declare any, uh, any uh, functions in top level of, uh, in, in the file in Kotlin, so you, you can do this. So it won't be visible outside this file, and this is absolutely okay. No problems. But, but yeah, defining uh, extensions visible from everywhere on uh, ty types such as int or string is a bad idea generally. Uh, with the, this uh, thing like before, um, it, it may be okay and actually good because, uh, well, the, the, uh, this is, it, it is more clear here what you mean day of week and day before, so probably there, there are no other meaning in this. Um, well, that's it. Uh, uh, another thing, well, if, if you want to uh, create a DSL that will be used by others, uh, you should apply the same rules to it as if you were designing a, any API. You should think about many things, so how it will evolve, how, about backward compatibility, and so on, and about edge cases as well. So, we have uh, a lot of uh, DSLs available uh, available uh, as a libraries. It works pretty well. Okay, thanks, Victor. Thank you.